round of mm, boxing. I am your humble host, Tummy Tom O'Neill. I am the human body snatcher, all that silly goodness. The very first thing I would ask of you as a fan of this show and as a fan of combat sports and boxing to be particular is please give us the thumbs up. I work very hard uh, to bring you guys these videos, lots of editing, things of that nature, um, and subscribers. I appreciate the new subscribers. Please hit the subscribe button. Um, giving you good boxing odds on this podcast, uh, giving you good bets, good parlays. Fight Picks from the Future is a short where you can get your parlays, and these episodes are more detailed breakdowns of the fights that are going to take place, the fights that just have taken place, um, and everything in between in boxing. We pretty much stick to uh, talking about the fights. Don't really so much get into the out-of-the-ring um, activities of fighters or anything like that. We're not a news outlet. We're a boxing podcast first and foremost. Um, let's jump right in. We're talking... Anthony Joshua versus Alexander Usyk, number two today, and there's a lot to go over with that. Uh, we actually had a huge boxing week because that is, of course, the fight of the weekend here, but uh, there was supposed to be the return of Adrian Broner. Now that is off as of literally late last night, as far as I'm aware. Uh, he is taking the fight off for mental health reasons. Whatever with Adrian Broner, really, man. So we won't have to cover that, thank God, because we also have Navarrete taking on Baez. Uh, there's a lot to get to. Tiafimo Lopez wins. Let's just say that real quick. We don't really need to jump into doing anything saying much about that. Uh, I've given my my opinions on it on the on the on on last week's show. Um, I think he's an incredible fighter. I think that he will. You know, no matter what, even if he takes another loss or whatnot, uh, and it's possible he doesn't, I think he has a lot of success at 140. Yes, I think he could beat Josh Taylor at 140 if his uh, head is in the right space. But there's not much to go over on the, the fight that took place, man, if we're really being honest. I mean, he was handedly expected to not only win, but to knock that guy out. Um, he did just that, so at least he did not underperform. He looked good. Um, we'll see where we go from here. We'll see when he gets an actual competitive fight. We'll talk about that. Let's jump right into uh, Usyk Joshua number two. I'm sure that's why you guys are primarily here. I'm here to give you a pick on that fight. I'm here to give you my reasonings. Um, first and foremost, I'm picking Alexander Usyk. When they fought previously, and we we're still doing this podcast, I picked Alexander Usyk to deservedly win um pretty much kind of nailed it but i i did miss it a little bit right i picked i said that uh in the first fight that i when Usyk was an underdog that i thought alexander Usyk would deservingly win this fight by decision but however i was hesitant about telling you guys to place a bet on that because i thought you know what dude the, the chances that they give this to the bigger star power in Anthony Joshua, if he wins three rounds, especially like let's say even just four rounds, they'll give him the fight. I really thought that would happen. We actually, lo and behold, had some fair judging on that fight. So uh, either way, did predict that Usyk should have won that, and he did. I'm glad that he got the victory there. We're picking him again, and we're not going to make the mistake of Talking politics and whatnot, especially because here's a key point. We don't like to talk so much about the promotions or corruption in boxing, any sort of thing like that. But it is very much worth noting in this scenario uh, uh, of their rematch coming up here that, you know, uh, <clears throat> Anthony Joshua is, uh, <clears throat> pardon me. Anthony Joshua is under Matchroom, right? Matchroom, uh, Matchroom Sports, and, and that's Eddie Hearn. And that is their golden boy, kind of besides Canelo now. Uh, he, Anthony Joshua always has been that guy for them in the past. Still somewhat is. Um, he, they have a vested interest in him winning the fight. That wouldn't mean that they would rob Usyk all the time, but that was my concern originally. This fight is actually going to be on Sky Sports, who bought it out 
when the fight was put in for, hey, bid for who wants to have the fight. Sky Sports paid, came in, paid a lot of money. That's a, They're out of the UK um, to have this fight be on their network. So it is not going to be under, um, you know, Eddie Hearn still promotes Anthony Joshua, but things got tricky there. They're also fighting in Dubai in a neutral, you know, uh, a neutral location. So I don't, I do think it was worth mentioning that. That I don't think there's going to be like a lot of um, mishaps about the judging and whatnot here. More than is regular to boxing, really. Um, I think that Alexander Usyk wins for the same exact reasons that I thought he would win the first fight. Because he is a far superior skilled boxer than Anthony Joshua is. And sometimes things get mixed up when you have a star power. I have been... I have been... Uh, an example of picking kind of the star power over. I think Canelo Alvarez is an amazing fighter. I picked him to beat Bivol. Um, I knew it would be a competitive fight. It wasn't even a competitive fight. I, I thought it would be, but I picked him to beat Bivol. We all saw how that turned out. Um, you know, I am no exception. Sometimes you get a star power name, even if you recognize and know enough about the sport to think, hey, the other guy's really good, so it'll be whatever. You kind of You kind of lean towards that. Even somebody like myself who's watched boxing my entire life, participated in it, so on and so forth. Um, I think that the the skill differential between Alexander Usyk and Anthony Joshua is, is, is so much so, it's so extreme, that I don't really give Joshua much of a chance. The word, or the phrase, I'm sorry, puncher's chance, really kind of, would, would indicate that someone has no chance at all except landing a somewhat lucky, powerful shot, and that is a chance that every boxer, you know, man and woman possesses. I give him more of a shot than that, but I think it would be so hard, so hard, man. I also think that <clears throat> Anthony Joshua, though he is a great, he is a, he is a very good boxer, I think that he is not on the level of Alexander Usyk, and I don't think that he's even on the level that he was when he beat Klitschko, when he moved on, was doing great things. I think he got caught up in trying to get the Wilder Fury fight. They ended up fighting each other. His name threw the mud a little bit there, even before the loss. Then lost to, uh, you know, Andy Ruiz. He came back and won that rematch, but that's two parts of reasons there. Is one, Andy Ruiz himself lost that fight by coming in completely out of shape off of a victory that stunned and shocked the world. He came in completely out of shape for that fight. Also, Anthony Joshua fought very smart, very smart, intelligent, but just using the jab because he's longer, uh, because Ruiz is shorter, more stat, and just kind of danced around using the jab, which credit to him, that's smart. Not the most thrilling effort. It didn't win him lock back a lot of credit because of those reasons. Then, you know, he moves on, loses to Alexander Usyk. I think he loses again here to Alexander Usyk because of the skill differential between them. I think Usyk is a fantastic talent in boxing, as honestly many of these Ukrainian fighters are. Vasily Lomachenko, uh, you know, Sergei Derevinchenko even is a favorite of mine, even though he has many losses at this point, might retire. I think that the guys coming out of that part of the world fight differently. Um, and I think that Usyk will. I think his 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 greatest asset. Uh, he has he has so much boxing ability. He cuts angles. He's defensively sound. All these things. But I think his greatest attribute, specifically at least against Anthony Joshua, is the jab. Joshua really didn't have an answer for the jab being stuck in his face all night. Only on occasion was he able to slip off the line and, and counter, but it just kept coming at him. The absolute activity of Usyk and his cardio to be in there in the championship rounds, keeping up that same, you know, relentless pace will be the same. Usyk also bulking up a bit more for this fight because it's only his, I believe, third fight. I know he fought <clears throat> Derek Chisora, and that was his debut at heavyweight. Uh, and as far as I know, then he only had fought in, um, you know, there might be one more in there I'm forgetting about. But he is he is new uh, to heavyweight. 
he is a cruiserweight. Alexander Usyk's the greatest cruiserweight that that there is. Uh, you know, uh, from clean, cleaning out in the modern era, you know, cleaning out that division, um, <clears throat> beating Tony Bellew. He's a fantastic talent, and the thing is, is that that jab and that work rate from him will leave Anthony Joshua with not much of a chance. He he does have a chance to even knock him out. <clears throat> the championship round, certainly, but I believe that uh, Anthony Joshua will be starting the process of gassing out in the seventh round, eighth round. I, I think eighth round and on. So even before the championship rounds, I think that we see a lesser version of Anthony Joshua. I also feel bad for the guy because usually I'd kind of give my opinions, not that they're worth all so much, but hey, this is my show. I'm giving my opinions. Usually I would say, well, you, in my mind, at least for, for whatever my opinion is worth, uh, the opponent would have to do this and then say, well, look it, they didn't do that. You know, they didn't do that. So they lost him. I feel bad for Anthony Joshua because I don't really see a key to victory here in the first fight with Usyk you know he kind of stood at range tried to box with Usyk we saw how that turned out for him <clears throat> he did have a little bit of success in that fight but not not a lot uh not a lot and, and it was a clear loss and you can't sit there and try to box at range with with Usyk just because you're long your job's not as fast your work rate is not even on the same level as Usyk he's just throwing in your face all night the angles, the, the the defense that Usyk possesses is beyond Joshua. Um, and he just had some moments because he has a bigger guy. He can hit hard. He certainly has a chance to knock Alexander Usyk out. If I have to tell him anything, and this is getting back to why I kind of feel bad for him, is that I, I would think that what the key to success for him would not just be, well, don't box him, like walk him down. It's not as simple as that as just walking him down. You have to corner him towards, not against the ropes even, towards a corner. Very close as you can get to putting him in a corner so that he can't take he can't angle off on you. Um, <clears throat> and then I think if you have the chin for it, you will be countered. Even while putting him in the corner like that, you will be countered. But if you're a way bigger, stronger guy... Not only like Anthony Joshua, but like a lot of heavyweights, because Usyk is a little bit small for a heavyweight still. And uh, I think that if you possess a lot more power, you're a naturally bigger man. Putting the other guy in the corner is never a bad idea for you. But <clears throat> even then, like I said, you will be countered. And I'm not sure that Joshua has the chin for it. I'm not sure about that because he he was getting hurt. He was getting hurt in that first fight especially later and that you know those those later rounds looked really really bad for anthony joshua getting his head snapped back by you know jabs and straights down the middle for Musik. that he's a smaller guy it's not an overwhelming overhand punch or a perfectly landed hook he's just gassing and getting hurt because he's getting hit clean so i uh, yeah that's what i would think that he would have to do Put him near a corner, up your work rate, and accept taking some shots to land the the best shots that you have to offer and knock Alexander Usyk out early as you can, as is possible. But if you ask me the probability of that happening, I don't think it's very high. You know, I don't see him knocking out Usyk. Uh, I even see Usyk possibly knocking him out. But... Uh, you know the money the 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 money line is not going to be that far off um <clears throat> i it changes every day and we still have a whole week before it's because i'd like to put these podcasts out early before other people as much as i can um you know and 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 give the whole week so i don't have anything near what will be the uh the actual money line for you know Saturday when the fight is about to take place. So what I but what I would imagine is that you know the last I saw I think Usyk was like a minus 300. I bet you that Joshua will probably come up a little bit more to make those odds even a little tighter. In boxing a minus 300 isn't an enormous favorite the way that it would be in MMA. That's for starters, but also I don't 
I, I do think usually the lines will, will tighten up. They usually tighten up more. So, uh, and you get people putting money on the underdog. So, I think that the lines will even be better than that to really place a bet on Alexander Usyk. Later on down the road before Saturday, as we always do, we'll give you a little parlay. Boxing, MMA, all mixed in, one or the other, whatever it is. <clears throat> we'll kind of give you the little bit of the parlay that we're going to have because these odds are decent enough to bet on Usyk, who will be a favorite still, you know, come Saturday. Uh, but they'll be close enough. And if you just parlay that with one or two other fights that you feel are safe, that I feel are safe, you have a really good chance of, of making some decent money that is beyond doubling your money. Um, and that's usually how I like to gamble personally. So the, that, 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 that little parlay, the, the finalized thing of what I will be betting on will come out later this week. But yes, I'm absolutely picking uh, Alexander Usyk to beat Anthony Joshua just as he did the first time. Um, I think it's dangerous to come in and swing on him because you'll be countered so much. I don't know he has the chin for that. And we've already seen what happens if you try to be safer, take a safer approach and box and maintain. I felt like in that first fight, Anthony Joshua was actually trying to be a little bit safe, right? And and that was why he ended up just kind of boxing with Usyk. Um, there was a really good stat that I'd heard on a show. I'm an enormous fan of Boxing Gems where... He was saying that basically most of uh, uh, any of the past um, Anthony Joshua fights, or at least his past few, uh, he had thrown, you know, something like 300 some on punches. And basically in the Usyk fight, without looking like he did, actually was like doubling the work rate just to almost double the punches, like 600 some odd punches in that fight. And it didn't even look that way. Because Usyk was just outworking him the entire time. And so it's fascinating to watch what I saw in that fight, watching it several times, their first fight, and then never realizing, wow, Joshua really was throwing that much because it didn't, it didn't seem like he was getting outworked the whole time. Um, but that is just a kind of, a kind of kudos to, to, uh, the work rate of Alexander Usyk. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, Adrian Broner, you know, called off his fight due to some mental health things. But listen, I don't, you know, again, we, we won't even get, we, I don't get into this stuff out of the ring. He just seems like a joke. He seems like a fucking joke. I don't really care for the guy at all. You know, and it's not, you don't have to be a good guy or I have some, it's like all the out of the ring shit, all the going to court shit is just stupid. And that's why I don't touch on it with any of these guys or if they have some family drug. I don't care about that, you know, but that is stupid, right? And then, but I put that to the side anyway, man, and or a trash talk or how, what kind of person I feel. I put that to the side, man. I want to watch the fight and watch how you perform, whether you're a good guy, a bad guy, a bad girl, a good girl, anything. I, I don't care. Um, <clears throat> you can't have all that going on and then kind of suck fighting too. I mean, you just, you know, he, he's got good defense. He don't let his hands go. He loses fights handedly. Like to pack, yeah. Like to, I forget the guy's last name. I feel bad. I should know it now. Uh, but the guy he fought last, no one knew who this fucking guy was. Um, he beat the hell out of Adrian Broner. He he won that fight so handedly, um, and they just gave that to Broner. That's unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. He handedly lost that last fight he had. Uh, but he always does the shit, and they didn't give it to him against Pacquiao. And he so handedly lost that fight, and then he just says the shit afterwards. It's like, well, I won that fight. The hood no won that fight. You're stupid. You're fucking stupid. You're a fucking idiot, and you can't even fight anymore. You were let down on all of the expectations that people saw in you earlier on in your career, and like the Maidana fight and stuff. You just, you know. That's a fucking waste of time. He's not even fighting this weekend now. Go figure. I don't care. Uh, let's move on to uh, Navarrete versus Baez. Listen, he's had 126 pounds. Navarrete is absolute ruler and king of that division at that weight. Uh, there are so many good fights to have up at 130. I believe he has a lot of success there being as he's an enormous 126 pounder. But you're not going to tell me that any of these guys like... I'm a huge Michael Conlon fan, man. I'm Irish. Let's fucking go, Conlon. But 
no, Conlon doesn't have as slick of a boxer. I, I just, I've given up, man. You, you watch uh, Navarrete, and you will come away with the impression that this guy's so unorthodox that he's making, he has to be making so many mistakes in there. He is susceptible to getting hit, uh, but he is because he fights in such a strange manner. He's powerful. He's big. He's tall. He's long. He's got reach and powerful. But he loves to like not. He he has some good defense, but he loves to like not play the safe boxing game. Jab move. He likes to walk his opponents down, and he is just a he's a mean person in that fucking ring. He, I mean, he really, he comes in there with very vicious intent, uh, and that's why he's so fan-friendly to watch. Uh, Manuel Navarrete is no joke. I believe that he does the same kind of deal to Baez. Baez not a bad fighter. I, I imagine, you know, this should be a somewhat, it, it has the potential at least to be a somewhat good fight, but yeah, I think Navarrete gets it done too. Depending on the odds of if they're not so extravagant, he might not be a bad bet. As long as it, it, he's not such an enormous favorite that it's ridiculous to throw on a parlay with Usyk, as a matter of fact. Um, Nico Ali Walsh is on that undercard on ESPN Plus as well. Um, coming in for, I think it's a sixth or a seventh fight, something like that. But that, that that's, a, that's a decent little card to watch. Um, and yeah. That's pretty much that's pretty much what I got. I, I want to see um, Navarrete move up um, to 135, uh, 130 pounds, and possibly catch Shakur Stevenson. There would be so because I mean, if anybody can expose him, it would be such a technical and just sound and calm and doing the right thing at every moment fighter like Shakur Stevenson uh, to stop Navarrete and expose. <clears throat> holes in his awkwardness all the time um but Shakur's bound for 135 so hopefully I'm, i always am hoping that we can get that fight meeting at 130 before Shakur goes up when Navarrete goes up um they already are talking about Navarrete versus Oscar Valdez I'd choose Navarrete in that fight I think he's a fantastic fighter man and I just want to see like it's become real interesting somebody at this point needs to prove that he has holes in his game because though it looks like it and though it looks like man it's so unorthodox what he's doing in there and his fighting style no one's able to no one's able to do anything about it it's unbelievable uh yeah until next time loyal fight fans it's been fun enjoy the fights this weekend i am not a hundred percent on this but i am going to because i have planned on this uh, before him my life's a little hectic right now but i would like to do my second live stream for that joshua Usyk fight um and i will attempt to do that hopefully we can get that done and watch out for the fight picks from the future um giving you the parlays uh and yeah enjoy the fights and thank you for the views thank you for the subscriptions please pass this along to anyone else you might know who enjoys boxing and combat sports.